Hello there, welcome to my class. Today we'll talk about... In this lesson, we'll be dealing with the design of combinational circuits. What are combinational circuits? There are two logic circuits we'll be designing. This is what we call the combinational logic circuit and the sequential logic circuit. So what's the difference between the two? The combinational logic circuit is a larger circuit where the output depends only on the conditions of the latest inputs. Sample of which are fire alarm system, intruder alarm, temperature control, and moisture control. Whatever the state of your input will determine what happens with respect to our output. How about that of a sequential logic circuit? If we try to consider this, a sequential logic circuit is only a combinational circuit, but however this time has a memory element. The memory element will be fed back into the combinational circuit, thereby the output will not depend anymore only on the input, but on the condition also of the previous output. Not like in combinational circuit, where the previous output has no effect on the next output. Hope I'm clear with the difference between that of a combinational and that of a sequential circuit. The basic sequential circuits that we are using are the flip-flops. Speed control are an example of sequential circuit because for us to be able to, uh, to design a speed controller, we have to determine what is the previous speed so that we, we will be able to know whether we want to increase or decrease the speed. Same with that of your timer. We have also counters for you to be able to count. You must be able to know the condition of the previous output so that you would, be, you would know what will be the next output. Example of which, if we want to count 0 to 10, we start with 0, 1, 2, 3, and we know what will be next after 3, and that will be 4, etc. Illumination control could also be an example of sequential circuit because in illumination control, what do you want to do? We want to increase illumination or to decrease illumination. For you to increase or decrease illumination, we have to determine what is the state of the illumination of the room. So let's start with the design of combinational circuit. In order for us to design combinational circuit, this is the process that we have to follow. Number one, and the most important of our process is to know the problem. Without knowing what are we trying to design, we would not be able to design anything. After determining what is the problem, we have to determine how many inputs and outputs do we produce. For us to be able to get the relationship of the input and the output, we assign symbols for the input and the output, and we determine now the relationship of the input and the output. Usually, in determining the relationship of the input and the output, we use a truth table. After having determined the relationship of the input and the output, then we extract the Boolean expression. And if it is possible for us to simplify the relationship of the input and output, then we have to simplify the Boolean expression that we derive from the truth table. After simplifying the expression, that is the time that we try to implement the expression. So, as an example, let's try to design this uh, simple logic circuit. Design a traffic light malfunction detection circuit. Applying rule number one, that is, know the problem. Let's try to dissect our problem, that is, design a traffic light malfunction detection circuit. What are we trying to do? We try to design a traffic light and what do we want to do with the traffic light to detect the malfunction on the circuit of the traffic light? With that, we would know what to do. How many input do we need, therefore, with respect to traffic light? So we know that the traffic light has red, green, and yellow. Therefore, there are three input. What do we want to do? We want to detect the malfunction. So how many output do we have? So it would only be one. And that is the malfunction of the traffic light. Our input, therefore, would be 3. And let's try to assign symbol with it. That is A, B, and C. And our output is only 1. That is the malfunction. Let's try to assign a symbol for it. And that is M. We can now put a truth table. And 
to put it through table, we use the number of input that is A, B, and C. With three inputs, how many possible combinations that we will be able to have with respect to our input? So using our equation 2 raised to n, that is 2 raised to 3, since that we have three variables, then there will be eight possible combinations. It is from 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1. We now determine the relationship of the input and the output. How do we determine the relationship of the input and the output? That is coming from our problem. That is, we want to detect malfunction. When does a traffic light malfunction? Let's say A is red, B is yellow, and C is green. So therefore, if there is no light that turns on, what does it mean? Is, it, uh, is the traffic light functioning well? Definitely not, because we want always that one of the light should turn on. Therefore, that is considered to be a malfunction. How about here? A, B, and C is equal to 0, 0, 1. Meaning to say, it's only C or the green light that turns on, where A and B is off. So, is that a malfunction? So definitely not. That's why we put zero. So, every time, therefore, that there is only one light that turns on, then it is not a malfunction. So, zero, one, zero is not considered a malfunction. In this case, zero, one, one, meaning to say the yellow light and the green light turned on at the same time. And the driver wouldn't know what to do, whether to go or to stop. Therefore, it's considered to be a malfunction. So here, there is only one that is turned on. So therefore, it's not a malfunction. Here, this is a trouble because A is red, C is green. Therefore, red and green are turned on. What would happen now? So the driver would not be able to know what to do anymore. So that is definitely a malfunction. The same with number six, there are two that is turned on. Therefore, it's a malfunction. Much more with respect to this, that is when all of the lights are turned on, one, one, one. It is definitely a malfunction. With that, we can now extract the Boolean expression. From our truth table, we can actually extract immediately the expression and all those combinations that is equivalent to one is equivalent to a mean term. So, for example, this one is equivalent to a mean term 0, 0, 0 is equivalent to A prime, B prime, C prime. This one, and then that will be, since it's a mean term, that will be ORD with number 3, that is 0, 1, 1, that therefore is equal to A prime, B, C, and so on. So, it will result into this equation, that is 0, 0, 0 will be equal to A prime, B prime, C prime. Number 3 will be equal to A prime, B, C. Number 5, okay, will be equal to 1, 0, 1. So therefore, that will be A, B prime, C. 6 will be equal to A, B, C prime. And 7 will be equal to A, B, C. Can we immediately implement this equation? Definitely yes. However, we might be able to simplify this expression. So how do we uh, simplify it? We studied two uh, simplification method of Boolean expression that is our Boolean algebra and our K-mapping. So let's try to use a K-map. What K-map are we going to use? Since there are three input, then we will be using a three-variable map. So let's try to put now our prime into our map. So our prime is 0, 0, 0. So that will be equal to 1. Then we have 3. Then we have 5. Then we have 6 and 7. Let's try to group our primes together. We know that 3 and 7 can be grouped together. And we can group 5 with 7. Then we can also group 6 with that of 7. However, 0, 0, there is no adjacent cell to it. So it will be grouped as is. The simplified equation would be for the blue group that will only be equivalent to AB. Okay? Since it's only AB that did not change in value, where C changes in value. Then we have our yellow group that will be that did not change and C. So therefore, that becomes BC. Our green group A did not change in value. So is with C. Therefore, that is equivalent to AC. And since there is only one in that group, so therefore, that becomes A prime, B prime, C prime. We have now our equation. And the next step is to implement the expression. Again, we need three inputs. And the first thing that we have to do is we have to and A and B. So A is unded with B. 
then B and then with C, then we have A and then with C. The last will be A prime, B prime, C prime, and then together. The result of these four will be ORD together. To check whether our circuit is functioning well, let's try to look into our truth table. Let's try to put an input 0, 0, 0. If A is 0, B is equal to 0, and C is equal to 0, will our output be equal to 1? So 0, 0, 0, what will happen? The input here for AB will be 0, 0. Therefore, the output here will be 0. Here, that will also 0, 0. The presence of 0 in AND gate is also equal to 0. Here, again, A is connected with 0. And C is also connected with 0. Therefore, this is also 0. However, this one is connected to A prime, B prime, C prime. And we know since the input is 0, 0, 0, and this is inverted, therefore, all of this is equal to 1. So, the input here will all be 1. Therefore, the output will be equal to 1. The output here is 0. Here is 0. Here is 0. However, the output here is equal to 1. The presence of 1 in an OR gate will be equal to 1. So, therefore, if our input is 0, 0, 0, our output is equal to 1. Let's try number 6. 1, 1, 0. That is equal to 1. 1, 1, 0. Here, that is equal to AB. 1, 1. So, therefore, this is equivalent to 1. The output here will already be equal to 1. There is no need to analyze anymore the state of yellow, green, and gray. Why? Again, as we said, with respect to an OR gate, if one if input is equal to 1, then the output will already be equal to 1. Since the output of this blue, blue AND gate is equal to 1, because it is connected to A and B, and A, B is equal to 1, 1, therefore, the output will already be equal to 1. So, in the design of combinational circuit, remember this simple rule. Number one, know your problem. Without understanding very well your problem, there is no way that you can proceed with the design. After which, you determine the number of input and output that you will be using. The third is assign symbols for the input and the output. With that, you can easily do your truth table to determine the relationship of your input and output. From your truth table, you will be able to extract your Boolean expression and you may need to simplify the Boolean expression and the last is now to implement the expression. We'll be solving more problems in order for us to be more familiarized with our design process. Thank you for staying with me and do watch my other videos that pertains to the design of combinational circuit.